On NFL Red Zone, they listed this stat. The 2023 Miami Dolphins have amassed more offensive yards than any other team in NFL history. If they keep their current pace, they would have the first 2,000-yard receiver ever while also leading the league in rushing. That is just absurd. While it's all hypothetical right now, I decided to take a look at the other offenses from this graphic to see how they finished. Maybe it'll help us see where the Dolphins are headed and maybe it won't, but let's dive in. First up, the 1998 49ers. With Garrison Hurst's breakout season in 1998, the Niners possessed arguably the top rushing and top receiving offense in the league. Their receiving core consisted of a veteran Jerry Rice, a young Terrell Owens, and JJ Stokes, who helped Steve Young lead the league in touchdowns. This team finished the regular season 12 and four, leading the league in total yards and third in scoring. Their defense finished slightly above average statistically. Their record was good enough to host their rivals at the time, the Packers, in the wild card. While there was elation from beating Green Bay, Unfortunately, on the first play of the divisional game versus the Falcons, Garrison Hurst suffered a gruesome ankle break on the opening play, which deeply affected this offense, and they went on to lose 20 to 18. Next up, the 2020 Dallas Cowboys. Through five games, Dallas had three games with 520 yards or more, and three games with 37 points or more, but they possessed a losing record because their defense was so bad. Their offense had pretty much put together these numbers due to multiple comeback attempts in those weeks, two of which they ended up winning. But after Dak got injured in week five's game, this pretty much ended their season. They probably weren't gonna make the playoffs anyway due to how bad this defense was, but because of Dak's injury, production slowed way down. The team finished six and 10 with a slightly below average scoring offense. Next on the list, the 2013 Denver Broncos. Simply put, this is the greatest scoring offense ever. The 2023 Dolphins have outpaced them in yards through five games, but this Broncos team was scoring more points. They literally could do anything offensively. Noshawn Marino had 1,600 all-purpose yards, and they had five separate non-quarterback offensive players reach double-digit touchdowns. That's a record that's probably never gonna be broken. And this was all because of Peyton Manning, who was at the peak of his powers. The greatest pre-snap quarterback probably ever was at his best and had legit five options on every play that were lethal. This team finished 13 and three with a jaw-dropping 37.9 points per game. And even though their defense was average to slightly below average, it didn't seem to matter. After battling to reach the Super Bowl, this team's legacy has been greatly overshadowed by what happened in the game. The greatest scoring offense ever laid the biggest dud in Super Bowl history after the game began with a safety. Two years before that team, the 2011 Patriots offense was insane. This team was sort of the opposite to the 2023 Dolphins. They didn't run the ball much, and they ran much of their passing offense through their two tight ends, who combined for 2,200 yards and 24 touchdowns. Who knows if we'll ever see a tight end tandem like that again. Also, Wes Welker had a legendary season too. They weren't a great rushing offense, finishing below average in yards and yards per carry. And defense gave up a ton of yardage and finished about average in points allowed. But this team was so efficient with Tom Brady that it made up for all those factors. The Patriots finished 13 and three, and they managed to reach the Super Bowl. And despite possessing a 17 and nine lead at one point, they once again lost to the Giants. Now for the final offense for this video, the 2000 St. Louis Rams is the closest resemblance to the 2023 Dolphins that we have. The biggest difference was that this Rams team had already proven itself with a Super Bowl victory the year before. But let's still break down the direct comparisons. Number one, it all comes down to speed. Falk, Holt, Bruce, and Hakeem were so fast that at least one of these guys on a weekly basis was busting off a huge breakaway play. This is what you see happening with Miami. Running backs Achan and Moster, along with arguably the fastest receiver combo ever in Hill and Waddle. Although we've yet to see the best of Waddle this year due to injuries. Every play with these two teams feels like it could go the distance. And this is due to having a great distributor at quarterback. Both Kurt Warner and Tua can be characterized by accuracy, ability to read defenses, and a knack for making big plays. Although it is worth noting that Kurt Warner definitely had more respect at that point than Tua has now. The biggest similarity statistically that I saw between these two teams is how effectively they run the ball. While both teams are the top producing pass offenses, their rush attacks 
also stack up as one of, if not the best, despite a low number of attempts comparatively. And while I think Miami's defense is better than that Rams unit, they both rank near the bottom in points allowed. So enough of the comparisons. How did that 2000 Rams team finish? Well, unfortunately, Kurt Warner got hurt and he missed five games mid-season. When he came back, he was not quite the same pre-injury. This team constantly got into track meets and didn't always come out on top. They went 10 and six and lost in the wild card. So overall, of the five teams I mentioned, four of them made the playoffs, two of them made the Super Bowl, and zero won at all. But as you saw, injuries to key players played a major role in these teams' success, as it always does. So what does this say about Miami? Let me know down below how you think the Dolphins will finish this year. Ultimately, if their key pieces stay healthy, they may just be able to take this thing all the way. Big hole, turns it on, accelerating. You can kiss him goodbye.